Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. If you don't know who I am, my name is Lalo and this is the Lalo Lab. Today we're gonna make very simple vegan gnocchi. No egg needed and the steel is going to be amazing. Three ingredients, potatoes, salt and flour. Let's go. The first step is preheating your oven to 450 Fahrenheit. We're going to make a bed of salt on our tray and then we're going to place the potatoes on top. And we're going to bake them for about 50 minutes to one hour or a little bit more, it depending on the size of the potato. You need to keep an eye on it. The reason that we're adding salt and the temperature is so high is because we want to evaporate the water that is in the potato. So when we mix with the flour, we have like a nice fluffy dough for the gnocchi. So we're just going to do a layer of salt. It doesn't have to be much. It's about, I would say five tablespoons. And then with your hands, just enough to have a base for the potatoes. And then we're going to place our potatoes in here. The salt, as we know, it extracts water and moisture from the food and this is the same from vegetables, meats as well. And now here we're going to bake it as it is, uncovered for about 50 minutes. So the potato just came out of the oven and now you can see how it's all wrinkled and now there is a space there that before wasn't because all the water evaporates so the potato shrank. Now we're going to open it and I'm going to show you the difference in the flesh of the potato. It's gonna look starchy, kind of gummy because all the starch actually. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do in half. Now look, did you see how it's like kind of gummy. This is what we want. You just use a spoon large enough and then remove this flesh and place it on top of a bowl with a sieve. If you have a tummy, that's perfect too. And you need to do this while they are warm because otherwise the gnocchi is going to change the consistency, the starch is going to contract and the product, the final product is going to be completely different. That's why you want to do it. Maybe don't do it when it's completely super hot. If you can handle it, do it. If not, when it's at least hot. And don't throw this away. These are really good onion, garlic, olive oil in the pan. You just chop this, then you put it in a taco with avocado, some salsa. Mm, super delicious. In Mexico, we eat them like that. When we do potatoes and then we, we don't use the peels or we're not gonna use them, then we cook it in the pan. They are just heaven. So we're gonna do little by little at the time. So we just wanna pass this puree through the sieve. So you just need to press with a spoon. Just make sure it's a metal spoon because this is going to require some, some strength to pass it. And this is what you're going to start getting. The potatoes are passing through here very finely. That is what is going to create that fluffiness because the air that is getting in there. And you just do that with all the potatoes. Also, if you happen to have a potato riser, use it <laughs> guys so this is what we got from the three potatoes and i weighed it down and then i weighed out my flour and my salt too so now i'm going to add the salt and also my flour using a sieve because i want to first make sure that the flour doesn't have anything and second because i want it to be super super spread out so I'm going to add half of it first and then with your hands gently you're just going to kind of you don't have to overwork the potatoes you just want to kind of you just want to get the flour into the potato if you work it too much it's going to become gummy and you need to also make sure you are observing the the texture in the dough I'm going to start doing it in the cutting board so you can see so this is how it looks look but you need to be kind of really aware of what you're doing, see the consistency, feel in your hands how wet is the dough, everything, everything matters. So in the kitchen you need to be really aware of that. It's absorbing the flour, so I'm just folding it in. Here I'm going to start feeling it a little bit of wetness, so I'm going to add more flour. 
And now I'm putting a little bit more pressure. I want the dough together. With my hands, I'm like rolling it. Just wanna make sure it's, it's the same thickness. And then now I can feel, you know, my dough stretching. The motion is with your palms, using this part, you're going to press and open. If I wanna stretch this side, so I just work in here, and this is going to start stretching. But you need to keep an eye because now this is thinner than this part. So then you need to do the same in the other side. If you start feeling the dough is a little bit wet, just spread a little bit of flour, you know, on top and on the surface. That's another motorcycle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is cut half of it, put it here so I can stretch the other side the amount of, that I want it. So I'm just... But you see how the dough is, is just one dough. So it's, it's not breaking down or anything like that. So that's good because that means that it has only the correct amount of flour and we work it properly. So after, after our dough is, is completely rolled and we have the size that we want our gnocchi to be, now just using a spatula or a small knife, we're just gonna cut out the size that we want. It's kind of aiming for the thickness of your thumb. You know, just go in one shot, just one to the front, is like from the back, just go to the front, to the front, to the front, just like this. Don't think about it too much. It doesn't have to be like, ultra perfect so this is the size that you want more or less look how beautiful they are they look like little pillows <laughs> put a little bit of semolina on top of a sheet tray with parchment paper and then we're going to just place the gnocchi separate a little bit from each other because we we're going to freeze them so we don't want them to stick to each other just nicely and gently just place them you can see how some of them are a little bit bigger and that's okay, you know. In this case, this is so beautiful, this is perfect. And that's it. We would just freeze the gnocchi for about four hours or until they are frozen. And then next day you can eat them and then just sear in the pan, that's nice for that. Even if you want to, you can eat them right now. Just boil water, season it with salt heavily and then just drop them. Put them in a sauce, tomato sauce with basil, <sighs> delicious. Another thing you can do is if you want another shape, you don't like that, then just grab a fork and then just press it down just to create these little holes and then you can trap the sauce in there. Usually the Italians think in that way, you know, always making holes in their pasta so the sauce gets trapped on it. And then just cut it. And the last baby, right there, look beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna place these babies into the freezer and we come back tomorrow for more recipes. Oh no, just we just come back tomorrow to make this. Hello guys. So this is the next day and our gnocchi is just perfect. Out of the freezer, now we're going to cook it. Very simple, we're going to use a little bit of garlic, tomatoes, Italian canned tomatoes, a little bit of Swiss chard and a little bit of basil. And just to top it, basil oil. If you're interested in how to make basil oil, check our Instagram because we make a reel explaining very simple steps for you to make it. Okay, first thing we're going to do is heat our pan on medium flame. We're going to add oil and then we're going to place our gnocchi facing down the face that we want to face up because we want to kind of sear it. You're going to need enough oil because you don't want your gnocchi to stick. So then just drop your gnocchi. And then don't move it. You don't need to move it at all. They just need to sear. Then we're going to flip them. If there is excess of oil, we get rid of them. And then we're going to start adding our next ingredients. Okay guys, it's been 30 seconds. What I'm going to do now is just flip them and look now that amazing color. That is so beautiful and it's full of flavor. That's the best thing. It's packed with all that caramelization of the sugars in the potato. It's just beautiful, look how gorgeous it looks. Damn. Okay, at, at this point, we're going to add our, our garlic. This garlic guy is sliced thinly, so just be careful, we don't wanna burn it. If you have to blow the temperature on, on your pan, do it please. And then here, just make sure the garlic is in the oil so you can infuse the oil. Look, beautiful, nice, right? This gnocchi is going to cook in like three minutes, like 
Honestly, this is super fast. It's super easy to do. When you see that the garlic starts getting some color, so we're going to add our tomatoes. Do you see that steam? We want that so our gnocchi cook in that tomato sauce. At the same time, both are cooking. We're going to season with some, some salt. Just a little bit to season the tomatoes because remember, we already seasoned the gnocchi. Just be gentle because you don't want to break your gnocchi. We're gonna cook this for about three minutes and then we're gonna serve. Okay guys, so now this is done. I'm going to add a spoon a spoonful of broth. This is vegetable broth. Turn it off. Last step, when is, this is almost done, I'm just going to add my sweet shirt. I have little pieces, you know, that I cut uh, with a cutter in this shape. But now you can see how here you have all the tomato. If this is a little bit dry, the only thing you're going to do is add one more uh, tablespoon of broth and then just move it around. So you get a little bit of sauce. And then to finish, a little bit of oil, just perfect raw olive oil. And then we're going to plate. So how do you know that the gnocchi is already cooked when we cook it this way? First thing is you can use, use your hands, your, your fingers, and then just touch, you're gonna see how it's like, like it bounces back, but it's still soft. If you wanna really make sure, just use a cake tester, put it right in the middle, and then you're going to put it right here, right in this part of the chin. It is very sensible, so you're going to actually feel if it's warm or not. So this is a good way to know, just so you know. Bring this sauce down. Also some of the gnocchi. It's all right if it looks a little bit messy. This plate is kind of that style, so it's all right. Look, one of these gnocchis already have a leaf on top, so that's great. Now we have that, then we're going to add our leaves. This switcher is, if you realize, it took like 30 seconds to cook. I don't want it super, super cooked all the way with the same steam that it was already in the pan. I just use that to my advantage. I have some basil here, some basil chiffonade that I'm just going to put in here. Clean our plate from the edges. And then to finish, we have this elixir, Italian elixir, I call it. That's basil oil. That's the one that I mentioned before. We're going to finish with, you know, some drops all around the plate because when you eat a gnocchi, you want to get, you know, just a drop of this oil in your mouth is just going to make you salivate. A little bit of lemon zest. When you're zesting, you don't want to go over the white part twice, just once, otherwise you're it's gonna get the bitter part, that is the white part. You just want this freshness of the, the lemon on the plate, beautiful. And you finish with some drops of lemon juice. Here you have it, vegan gnocchi, Swiss chard, tomato, and basil oil. And look how beautiful gnocchi we got here. Your effort is going to pay off. And my effort is going to pay off just in a few minutes, trust me, because I'm gonna eat it. Vegan gnocchi, very simple to make, only three ingredients to make the gnocchi, and you can make them in advance, for God's sakes. After you take them from your tray, then just put it in bags, Ziploc bags, and keep it in there. Or just maybe in a container, airtight container, freeze them, and when you want, maybe just get three, and they can be cooked frozen. That's amazing, right? And you don't have to buy that kind of gnocchi that they sell in the supermarket, because now you are better. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I'm gonna leave the link for another two videos right here that are also amazing, and you're going to love it, and I'm sure you're going to learn something from them. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for coming into my kitchen. You know, it's New York, so sirens everywhere. Always the... How does it look like? The what? How is the... The mag mag? The, the horns? Horns, it's called. Everyone is like mag 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 mag. Like they were gonna get there earlier, right?
pa para la pa pa New York New York he's noisy eats noisy eats noisy <laughs>